Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an amortization table in Excel. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make some of these headings. So these headings here, as well as these headings here, and then below that, you're going to have these headings here. So these headings at the top are the information we need to make our table, and then these headings are the headings for our actual table, and we'll build the table from here, and then build it down. So, as you can see, I have principal, and then you put your principal amount there, your number of years, so in my case, 10, and I'm just going to say this is a mortgage. You might be doing this for a loan or something else. And then you have your annual rate, so of course, put whatever your rate is. Mine is 5.4 per annum, which means per year. And then these headings over here, we can calculate with these values if you haven't already been given these values over here. So your number of payments is simply your number of years times how many times it's compound, you know, how many times you're making repayments. So in my case, let's just say this mortgage is monthly. So we'll do times 12. If yours is quarterly, it's times 4, weekly times 52, whatever yours is. So we'll go times 12, hit enter, now we have our number of payments. Our monthly rate is very similar to that. So we have our annual rate, however we need it monthly, so this time we're going to divide by 12. And then finally, if you're not giving your payment, you can calculate it by going equals PMT, which stands for payment. Then we enter our rate. So our rate, be careful, it's not your annual rate. It's your compounding rate. So in our case, our monthly rate. Then hit a comma. And we have a number of periods, number of payments. So that's just 120. And then we have our principal value, which is your principal here. Make sure you put a negative in and then your principal value. Then hit another comma. Then we have our future value. Now this is a mortgage, so we want to pay it off completely, which means our future value will be zero. And finally, we have type, either end of the each period, which means we do our monthly payments at the end or at the beginning. Let's say we do them at the end because that's probably more common. Then we'll hit enter and we have our payment amount in there. We have now collected all the information we need to start making our table. So if we start with the months column, we're going to enter our months going down. So we have month 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's going to go all the way down to month 120. So if we highlight this pattern and drag it down, and we'll stop at 120. We have now done our months column all the way down. Our next column is our beginning balance. So we can just get that by simply going equals, and our beginning balance for month 1 will just be our principal amount because we are just starting out. So just go equals your principal amount. Then we have our payments. Our payments will not change over the course of the 120 months. They will always stay at 2409 or whatever your payment is. So we'll just go equals our payment amount. However, we don't want that to ever change. So if we want to lock that in, we can go a dollar sign before the letter and the number. So in my case, I put in equals dollar sign D dollar sign 4. Hit enter, and now we can double click this little square here, and we have filled our payment all the way down to month 120, or however far years goes down. Next up, we have our interest. To get your interest, we have to calculate this in each period. So we'll go equals, it's our beginning balance for the month, so in this case our beginning balance is this value here, times our monthly interest rate. Make sure it's your monthly amount, not your annual amount, and hit enter. We then have our principal reduction, so of course our payment will reduce our principal, however the interest will make it go the other way. So if we go the difference between those two, that will be the amount our principal is reducted each month. So for this month, 
it's that amount there. So always payment minus interest. And finally we have our ending balance which is simply our beginning balance minus our principal reduction which gives us our ending balance. And of course our beginning balance for our next month will be the ending balance of the month before. So this value here. And from here we will simply repeat the process. However you don't have to do this manually. You only have to do it manually for about the first three months. And then we can just drag it down. However it doesn't always drag down correctly. So stay with me and I'll make sure that yours flows through all the way down. So if we continue we have our interest for month two which is equals our beginning balance times our monthly rate. Your principal reduction is the payment minus the interest and the ending balance is your beginning balance minus your principal reduction. And we'll do it one more time. So our, our beginning balance is your ending balance of the last month. Then we have our interest. Not sure why these are being underlined. There we go. And then our principal reduction is your payment minus your interest. And your ending balance is your beginning balance minus your principal reduction. Now that we've done this for four periods in a row, so if we try to drag this down two months, we can see that we're getting some errors. So let's try to work out why we're getting those errors. So here, this is linking to up here. Why is that happening? Well, this one links to here. Whereas this links to here. This links to here. So I'd say this is linking weird because it's confused with this top one, which we got from up here. So if we instead try dragging down from the second and third, we can see that it has fixed a lot of this. All of our beginning balances look correct. Our payments are good. Our principal reduction seems to be working. This minus this. And our ending balance seems to be working. The only one we're having trouble with is our interest. So as you can see, it works for the first three. But as soon as we get to the, to the fourth, it's taking this value here. So the reason why it's doing this is because we haven't locked in this cell. It's moving down. So if we instead lock in that our monthly rate is always going to be this amount, it's never going to change, then the interest should line up. So to do that, we simply put the dollar signs, meaning that this amount always has to be this amount. We don't want it to change with the pattern like the other values are doing. So put dollar signs with your monthly rate. So in my case, dollar sign D, dollar sign 3. And then hit enter. And do that for the month below as well. So when we do drag this down, it should hopefully recognize the pattern. So that's all looking like it's flowing through very nicely. So if we then double click here, hopefully it will flow all the way through and we will have a complete table. Might have to drag it as it's a bit slow. Go down to 120. And as you can see, we now have our full amortization table. And we know it's right because it ends with this 0, 0.00 balance. We got it to finish with a balance of 0, which is what we want because it is a mortgage and we have paid it off fully within 120 months. So I hope you found this video helpful and if you did please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.